Welcome to Church Online. Happy Sunday! Welcome to Church Online. Welcome to Church Online from Alfonso and Pardillo Family. Happy Sunday! Hello, Equipers Manila from South Adult Hub. Woo! Yes! From Saleta Family, welcome to Online Church! Yay. Good morning everyone and welcome to Equipers Church Online! My name is Jasmine and my name is Joel and we are so glad to have you join us for church this morning. Yep, we may be doing church online but we believe that wherever you are, even in your own homes, that God will move there and you will find friends and community. 
So we encourage you to tag your friends and family on the comment section below so that they can stream in as well. Yep, so we have so much in store for you guys this morning. But before all that, we're going to start with some praise. So we encourage you, come on, get up. Make sure the people around you are awake and engaged. And we're going to start with some crazy praise. Good morning, church. We're hoping you're having a blessed Sunday morning. So why don't we stand up and praise and let's celebrate God's presence. Come on. else we want to welcome our first timers or what we call VIPs so if it's your first time today we ask you to comment below hashtag new here so we can stay connected with you at our ePlace online or if you invited someone today and you know that they're watching comment below hashtag new here with their name so that we can stay connected with them and if you didn't already know here in the Cooper's Church we exist for two reasons one is to exalt God and two is to equip people and here we make sure that you belong before you believe also in our church, we believe that God honors generosity, so we will show you a few ways that you can give and be a blessing. 
We know that if we test God, even at such a time like this, He will really open the doors of blessing for us. Now, if you're wondering how you can bless the church in light of canceling services, we want to let you know that you can still honor God with your finances through bank deposits and bank transfers, which are more convenient for you. But if this won't be possible, no worries. You can save and give it once we resume our church gathering. You will see the bank details flash on the screen. If you have chose to deposit, transfer, or save, please reach out to the person of contact for each campus so they can revert if this has been received. See you soon, church. Enjoy the live stream and happy giving. And of course, for the most important people, our VIPs. Simply click the link tree in the caption posted on Equipers Manila page. Go to hashtag new here, then you will be redirected to the form. Just fill it up and this will be a huge step advancing your faith journey with us. We would love to connect with you and to pray for you. We have our leaders that will get in touch with you through Messenger after the service. Looking forward to bond with you and get to know you more. Do you already belong to an existing e-group? If not, you're really missing the joy and the fun in belonging to one. So just comment with the hashtag new here so that our leaders can reach out to you. And it will be another awesome thing if you're going to be a part of our faith journey. It is a series of sessions where you will enjoy learning more about your faith along with the others. Exciting, right? Hey Church! Thank you for streaming with us online. We miss you and we are certainly looking forward to see you soon. But for now, let us utilize our online platform for our meetups. Flash on the screen are the schedules of the Have Virtual Meetups. Make sure to belong to one, because if not, you're definitely missing a lot. It's fun, helpful, and certainly a good way to spend your time. If you feel like Sundays are way too far apart, we feel you. That's why we have an online eConnect midweek gathering where you can interact online with the church people that you surely miss. This is every Wednesday at 6 p.m. via Zoom application. Bring your friends, families, and hubs. This is going to be exciting. Hey guys, we hope you're having a great Sunday. So, is it your first time to attend our online Sunday service? If it is, then we would like to invite you to our online e-place right after the service because we would love to know more about you. Yeah, and this will just take a few minutes of your time. And also, we have a special treat just for those people who are new to our church. So to join, just download the Zoom and Messenger app and click on the link provided at the comment section below. So, see you later guys! See you! So that is what is happening in the life of our church and now we're gonna have a time of worship. So we encourage you wherever you are to make space for the Holy Spirit to move and speak to you this morning and just prepare your hearts to worship. Before we worship this morning, I know that everyone is too preoccupied with all our worries and fears and doubts in this hard season where we're all in. But I just want to encourage you guys to not waste this season. Do not waste this season being distracted. Do not waste this season being far away from God. Because this is the perfect time for us to get closer to Jesus. This is the perfect time for us to follow God. The perfect time to show God how we love Him. And as it is said in the Bible, there's nothing worth more compared to experiencing His love. There's nothing worth more compared to experiencing the presence of God. And there's nothing worth more compared to being founded in God's presence. That's why as we sing this song, as we sing this worship this morning, let our faith rise over our insecurities, our anxiety, our loneliness. Let us declare our faith, our dependency on God because we have a God who never changes. And I believe that He will prove to it to us this season. So let's not lose heart because God is always with us. Let's give Him the praise and the glory, the worship that He deserves this morning. Why don't we raise our hands, we lift our hands to God. 
And let's just worship Jesus.
love the worship at our church. And what we've been loving as well is the new series Upstream, which we will have this morning. But before that, this is for the parents watching. If you're with your kids, we invite them to Kids Church at 3 p.m. And now we move on to the highlight of the service, which is the word. So take your pens and papers and also your phones and get ready for an amazing word. Yes, good day to everybody. Good morning. Magandang umaga po sa bawat isa. Welcome to church and today we're going to be starting a new series. And I'm so happy that today, kasama po kayo, yes, you, kasama ka ngayong araw na to. Thank God that you have decided that you join us today for our church. And I know that God has a message for all of us. So if you're ready, come on, let's get ready to listen to the word of God for today. Upstream, this is what the Holy Spirit is leading us as a church. This is what the Holy Spirit is saying to us, what will be our next step, what will be our stance, what will be our conviction in a times like this. Upstream. In the past months, mga nakarang uh, buwan, I've been asking, I've been praying to the Lord, Lord, ano ang leading nyo po sa amin? Ano ang guidance nyo po sa amin? And you know what? It is good that we ask the Lord for His guidance because we don't follow uh, what's popular. We follow what's supernatural. We don't follow a trend. We follow the Word of God. We don't follow our emotion. We follow God's conviction. And so we ask the Lord. We pray as a church, Lord, what will be your leading? And the Holy Spirit spoke through the Word of God that His leading for us in a season like this, in a time like this, is to go upstream and when i read the word of god the holy spirit led me to go into the book of jeremiah and the spirit says that dwell on this book because this book totally relates to what you're going through right now as a nation and as believers and the book of jeremiah is a book that totally relates to what we're going through right now in our situation right now if you're going to read it, you will learn how you're going to act in times like this, in the times of difficult situation, how you're going to pray, how you're going to respond. And, and so this book has been a big help to me, and this is what I want to share to you in the times like this. The book of Jeremiah tells the account of how Israel suffered in the hands of Babylon. And guess what? They suffered for 70 years. They have been in exile as slaves for 70 years with no name as a nation, with no identity as you know as a as a as a citizen of a certain country sila po ay naghirap ng grabe uh, tayo nga po ay uh, nagrereklamo at minsan tayo nahihirap sa hindi pa nag-iisang taon itong crisis na to but guess what they suffered for 70 years just imagine of 70 years of lockdown 70 years of crisis kaya sa panahong ito ang daming lumayo sa Dios ang daming tumalikod sa Dios but there is one guy, there is one guy whose name is Jeremiah who took a stand, who took, who took a stand and, and, and have the conviction to keep on going, to keep on prophesying, 
to keep on believing, to keep on hoping, and to keep on declaring the promises of the Lord. There is this one guy who took his ground in spite of the difficult situation that he was in, in spite of the persecution, in spite of the pain, he went upstream. This is the guy who, who even in the prison, inside the prison, penned these words and spoke these words and declared the promises of the Lord right in the middle of the situation, of a hard situation. And he spoke these words and he prophesied these words. He said this word, the Lord declares, I know my plans for you, declares the Lord. My plan to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans for hope and for a future. I know you know that verse, but today we're going to fully understand the context of what, uh, what, what happened while it has been said, while it has been uh, spoken. And Jeremiah spoke the word. And let me tell you this. In that time where everybody is going in a certain direction, going far from the Lord, Jeremiah took a stand. And instead of following the crowd, instead of following what's the trend, instead of following the emotion of the people, Jeremiah took a stand and he went upstream. So this is the leading of the Lord for all of us, that we should go upstream. This is the flow of the Holy Spirit for you and for me. That God, the Holy Spirit is saying to us that we're going to go upstream. Upstream, it means going against the current or salungat sa agos. We are going against the current. We are not going for what is popular or for what is trendy or what is the flow of the world. We are not going with the flow of the world. We are going with the flow of the Lord and the flow that's coming from the word of God. Can I declare to you this? Upstream, you're going against the current. Salungat sa agos. Marami na ang sumuko, pero ikaw, patuloy ka pa rin na nagtatagumpay sa Panginoon. Marami na ang pinanghinaan ng loob, pero ikaw ay nagpapatuloy pa rin na malakas ang loob mo. Marami na ang bumagsak, pero ikaw, patuloy ka pa rin na bumabangon sa Panginoon. Marami na nagduda sa Diyos, pero ikaw patuloy pa rin na nanampalataya sa Panginoon na may darating na magandang kinabukasan na lahat ng ito ay matatapos din at lahat ng ito ay malalampasan din. Pero maraming tao ang kumakapit na sa patalim, gumagawa na ng masama, pero ikaw nagpapatuloy pa rin na gumagawa ng tama. Maraming tao ang iniisip na lang ay kung anong matanggap, pero ikaw ang iniisip mo ay paano magbigay. Maraming tao na ay nagre-reklamo sa Diyos pero ikaw patuloy pa rin na nanalangin sa Panginoon. Maraming tao na ang lumayo sa church, ayaw na mag-church kahit man lang online pero ikaw nandito ka pa rin. You are spending your time because you know what? That is going upstream. You are going against the current. And can I tell you, those who go upstream will be protected by the Lord. Those who go upstream will be blessed by the Lord. Those who go upstream will be covered by the Lord. Upstream is going against the current. And I know a lot of people that I know right now, that I, I've seen right now, people who went upstream sa lungat sa agos ng mundo. Alam ko na dinig nyo yung kwento na kita nyo sa balita. Paano si, uh, si Christopher De Leon bilang isang, alam natin kilala natin siyang isang actor. Uh, siya yung unang tinamaan ng COVID at the time, uh, two months ago. But sabi nga niya, nung pinakinggan ko niya kanyang testimony sa TV, ang sabi niya, nagpapasalamat ako sa Diyos na tinamaan ako ng COVID kung kailan Christian na ako at nakakilala ako sa Panginoon. At nung tinanong siya, anong nagpagaling sa kanya, anong nagbigay uh, sa kanya ng Kagalingan, alam sabi niya, boldly na sinabi niya, uh, alam niyo sa TV, sabi niya, walang iba nagpagaling sa akin, none other but the Almighty Jesus. That is going upstream. And uh, uh, hindi, lang, uh, hindi lang si Christopher De Leon, but uh, sa atin na lang, sa ating uh, church, uh, ako yung papasalamat kay Lord na may mga taong, may mga uh, uh, kapatid tayo sa Panginoon na uh, 
na nung una sila ay na-diagnose na positive ng, ng COVID pero pagpapasalamat ako sa Panginoon dahil uh, ang, ang mga kapatiran ito ay pinagaling ng Panginoon nagpapasalamat ako na si Abby ay pinagaling ng Panginoon ang iba na akala nila meron sila pero sila ay pinagaling ng Panginoon ako nagpapasalamat kaibigan natin si Jeff Hoglin na pinagpipray natin ngayon ay magaling na sa biyahe ng Panginoon but why, why I'm telling this? because Kung ang ibang tao ay nawawala na ng, 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 ng pag-asa, you're in despair, you're in panic, pero ikaw iba, you're going upstream dahil may kakampi ka, may kasama ka, may Diyos na gumagabay sa iyo. At hindi lang sa mga pinagaling ng Panginoon. How about ang kaibigan ko, ang pangalan niya ay si Kenneth. Uh, siya nagtatrabaho uh, bilang OFW sa, sa Norway. At habang ang iba, ang, uh, they suffered for uh, laid off, ang iba ay nawala ng trabaho, siya naman ay na namamayagpag sa kanyang trabaho ang pagkakaalam po siya pa ay na-promote siya pa ay na-bless at naging secure ang kanyang trabaho at uh, doon sa kanyang barko bago sila and nabiyaan siya na ang hirap makababa ang hirap makabalik sa Pilipinas pero siya ay nakabalik ng Pilipinas as easy as that pero ang ginawa niya bago siya bumalik he took an initiative na bago siya bumaba pinag-pray niya lahat ng mga kasama niya sa barko what is that? that's going upstream and I don't want, hindi ako magtataka kung paano siya pinabura ng Diyos. Na para bang dumaan lang siya sa airport, hindi siya na tamaan ng virus at ngayong kapili niya ang kanyang pamilya. Alam sabi niya, grabe ang biyaya ng Diyos sa akin. What is that? Because kung ang direction ng mundo papunta sa isang direction, ikaw ay iba dahil anak ka ng Diyos. You are going upstream. Hindi lang si Kenneth. Yung mga kaibigan, uh, for example, ang uh, kaibigan natin, ang pangalan niya si Lorna, nagmamay-ari ng isang restaurant sa Las Piñas. Sa panahon ngayon, sabi niya, lahat ay nagbabagsakan ng businesses, nagbabagsakan ng negosyo. Pero sabi niya, ito yung panahon na lalo ako magbibigay sa Panginoon. Lalo ako magiging faithful sa giving. At napatunayan niya na kahit panahon ng crisis, ang kanyang business ay nandyan pa rin. Ay still thriving. What is that? It's going upstream. Na kung ang iba'y palubog, ikaw ay paangat. And how about the testimony of many people na kahit sa panahon ngayon, mahirap ang panahon, pero mayroong provision na dumarating. Come on, is there anyone in the house celebrating with me that until today, God has been faithful in providing for you. You are going upstream. Hindi ka pababayaan ng Diyos because you are going upstream. How about the testimony of families that are celebrating in times like this? Kung kailan pa crisis, ito pa yung panahon na ang kanilang mga pinapanalangin na kapatid, uh, asawa, kapamilya na maligtas. Ito yung time na sila yung naligtas. What is that? It's going upstream. And how about this? This testimony ng mga anak ng Diyos, ng mga katulad mo na sa panahon ng crisis dapat mag-back off. Pero ito patuloy yung panahon na nag-forward nag ka at nag-volunteer ka na mag-serve kay Lord. I just want to honor, for example, Warren. Uh, Warren Bagalay. And you know, he's a gamer. Come on somebody, he's a gamer. But you know what? A gamer can serve the Lord. And at this time, siya ang nasa forefront doing everything, all our production. What is that? Habang nga ang iba'y palayo, ikaw ay palapit sa Diyos. Ikaw ay maglilingkod sa Diyos. That's going upstream. How about the testimony of our church na kahit crisis, kahit online, hindi ko susabihin na walang masisave, walang maaabot. Actually, sa panahon ngayon, mas marami pa tayong naabot sa panahon ng online. There are people getting saved in Japan. There are people getting saved in Ireland. There are people getting saved in Singapore. There are people getting saved in different parts of our country. And they're messaging us. Or can I tell you, this is a time for the church to decrease. This is a time for the church to increase. You know why? Because the, the economy is not based on what the world says. Our economy is based on what God says. That's going upstream. It's going against the current. Oh, I praise the Lord that there are people who chose to go upstream. And upstream means that you are going forward, not backward. If you're going to read the book of Jeremiah Church, you will find it out that the bottom line of everything is the sins of the people. There are 
almost five chapters, God laying down the sins of the people and God is asking them and compelling them and reminding them to repent and to turn back from their sins. And can I tell you this, that promise that we have read, which is our text for today, that God said, I know my plans for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, and plans of hope in the future. Let me tell you this, those things are given for those people who repented and who followed the Lord and who turned their back from their sins. And let me tell you this, many people may have already lost hope, but not you. Many people have already lost their faith, but not you. Many people have quit the church, but not you. Many people uh, uh, stop connecting with, with, with people, but not you. Many people have stopped serving the Lord, but not you. Many people already lost hope, but not you. You are different. You have a different mindset. You have a different heart. Why? Because you are going upstream. You are not going backward. You are going forward. You are going forward. Habang ibang maraming tao ay lumalayo sa Diyos. Sa panahon ni Jeremiah, ang daming lumayo sa Diyos. Ang daming nag sa Diyos. Pero can I ask you, ito pa ba yung panahon ng crisis na lalayo tayo sa Diyos? Kanino pa ba tayo kakapi? Kanino pa ba tayo susuko? Kanino pa ba tayo tatawan? Wala nang iba kundi sa Panginoon. Pero pinaliwanag ng Diyos sa, sa Jeremiah na sabi ni Lord, huwag niyo akong lapitan kung kayo ay nangangailangan lang. Kaya ang sabi niya, if you want this favor, then have forgiveness first. Because forgiveness is the thing that will unlock God's favor if you are forgiven. And here's the good news. God is so merciful. He, he even said, you just come back to me. You just mind the first step. Bumalik ka lang sa akin. Magsisi ka lang. The Bible says, God will forgive our sins. And God said, if He is willing to forgive us, He is merciful to forgive us. And all you got to do is instead of going backward, go upstream, go forward. Instead na palayo sa Diyos, palapit sa Kanya. This is the time we cannot afford to go far from the Lord. This is the time that we need to get closer to the Lord. Upstream, not going backward, but going forward. And not only that, upstream, which means is this, that you keep on believing that God knows a better plan. Upstream is keeping on believing that God has a better plan. Can I tell you the verse? Go back to the verse. It says, I know my plans for you. You know what the problem is? Why we are not connected with the Lord? Why we are easily discouraged? Why we are easily disappointed? Why we are easily frustrated? Why we run away from the Lord? You know why? You know why? It's because we don't know God's plan for us. And God said, I know. God, I know my plan for you. I know my plans for you, saith the Lord, declares the Lord. And can I tell you this? Can I remind you this? Oftentimes you're asking, Lord, what is this plan? Ano ba itong plano mo para sa akin? Hindi ko po mag maintindihan. Hindi ko po malaman kung ano bang concrete na plano mo para sa akin. And here's just what I find out. Oftentimes, the Lord Oftentimes, the Lord will not reveal to you the total detail of the plan. He will just give you the promise so that you will believe in Him, so that you will follow Him by faith. But God said, I know my plans for you. Alam ng Diyos ang plano niya para sa iyo. But most of the time, we ask the Lord, Lord, ano kaya ang planong ito para sa akin? Lord, what is your plan for me? If Jeremiah is asking that question, Lord, what is this plan for me? And it's obvious, if you didn't get it until now, can I tell you, can I reveal to you, what is this plan? There's no other plan, Jeremiah, but you. And can I tell you, God's plan are not things. God's plan are not blessings. God's plan is you. 
the best plan in the world is a person. And when God says, I know my plans for you, he is pertaining to you. Because if you will not say yes, then all plans to prosper you, all plans of hope, all plans of future will not happen if you will not say yes to him. So can I, can I declare to you that the best plan that God has thought in the time of crisis is you. God's best plan is you. So if you're going to take it, you're going to keep on believing that God has a better plan. And sometimes it doesn't make sense. Sometimes we don't understand. Sometimes we don't comprehend. Paano kumilos ang Panginoon? And usually, kung ang pagkilos ang Panginoon ay totally different to what we are expecting. Look at Jeremiah. He's been asking the Lord, Lord, you, you, you promised me that your plans for me is to prosper me and to have hope in the future. But next minute, ang nangyari kasunod ay nakakulong si Jeremiah for how many years? He was in prison, one prison to the next. And is that the plan to prosper? In our mind, in our judgment, we're going to say that that's not a, a good plan. But if you're going to read the whole story of the book of Jeremiah, if you know the end, you will discover that the place where Jeremiah was in prison was the place used by God so that he will be rescued from the Babylons. And that's the place where he was found out and where he was rescued. If he was not in that prison, he could have been dead. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you this. What if the thing that you are complaining that is locking you up is actually God protecting you? So be thankful for the closed doors. Be thankful for the no. Be thankful for all the rejection because you never know that actually God is protecting you. So even God, He is not doing things as what the world thinks. He's working different than what we are expecting him to be. So ladies and gentlemen, but in these times, you got to keep on believing that God has a better plan. It may not make sense. You go upstream and not just keeping on believing that God has a better plan. But upstream, it is prophesying on your present situation. Prophesying in your present situation situation if you're gonna imagine jeremiah in the prison reciting this verse imagine this with jeremiah how about that alone ang sinisigaw niyang verse ay ito oh god said i know the plans for you i know the plans for you the plan to prosper you and not to harm you a plan of hope and of the future sasabihin siguro naman nakikinig sa kanya uh, ikaw nga, nakakulong dyan eh. Nagsasalita ka ng prosper, prosper ka dyan. Anong prosper ang pinagsasabi mo? But can I tell you this? Jeremiah is declaring that because he's not declaring the present situation, but he is declaring his destination. Oh, come on somebody. And that's our problem. We are always overwhelmed and always describing our present situation. And we have forgotten to speak our destination. What is your destination? It's hope. It's future. A bright future with the Lord. And that's what Jeremiah is saying. Na kahit nakakulong siya. Siya sabi niya, he's going upstream. If people are already complaining, if people are already doubting, if people are already cursing God, he in the prison is praising the Lord, declaring the promise of the Lord. He is saying, God says, I know the plans for you. God declares it. And he said, his plan for me is to prosper me, not to harm me. A plan of hope and the future. It may not make sense to other people. But ladies and gentlemen, when you declare, you are not declaring it so that you become popular or being accepted by the people. You are declaring it for your life. You are going upstream. You are taking hold of the promise of God. And you are not stopping declaring it in your family. So panahon ng crisis na to, don't stop believing. Don't stop prophesying. Keep on declaring God's promises in your life. Even in the hardest situation. 
even your lap up. Don't shut up. Don't shut up from the promises, from speaking the promises of the Lord. You go upstream. Go on the direction of the Lord. Don't follow. Don't just go with the flow of the world. Go with the flow of the Lord. And, and upstream. It is not quitting in preaching the word and in saving lives. That's what it means of going upstream. Why people are res uh, resorting to hatred, resorting to judgment and criticism and being toxic. Come on, we go upstream. When there's hate, there we gotta do. We gotta give love. It is not quitting from saving lives. It is not quitting in in preaching the gospel. It is not quitting in saving lives. And and I praise God that Jeremiah did not quit in preaching the word. You know, the prison cannot stop him. The, the, the persecution cannot stop him. The situation cannot stop him. The crisis cannot stop him. Ladies and gentlemen, can I implore to you that even during this crisis, we should not stop in saving lives. This actually should be the time, the, the best time for us to reach more people, to share the gospel, to share salvation. Because can I tell you this? If we are unstoppable in sharing the word, the hope, and the, the word of God to the people, that's the only thing, the best thing that this world needs. Salvation of the soul. Kasi kahit pag gumaling lahat ng tao, maging okay, maging healthy, maging uh, gumaling lahat sa, sa COVID o sa kahit anong disease, pero kung hindi naman tiyak ng tao kung saan patungo pag sila ay namatay at wala silang kaligtasan, kahit anong vaccine sayang, kahit anong kagalingan sayang. Kasi the most important thing in this world is to be saved. And to be saved, you can only find it in Jesus. And that's the reason why this is the motivation what kept Jeremiah going. What, uh, uh, ito yung motivation na bakit siya nagpatuloy na kahit anong hirap Shining Patuloy, and can I just remind you, for 70 years he was speaking these words. It seems that nobody believed him. And this is the best encouragement that I get from Jeremiah in this time. That you don't just preach the word of God because of result. I know there will be results. People will get saved. But there will be times that there will be no people that will believe what you are saying. But does it mean that, that you will stop? So now I get it. I don't preach. I don't serve for his soul. I serve for the Savior. And that decision is going upstream. You are not preaching the word just to be popular. And that's why I also take this time to honor all the pastors, honor all the leaders, honor all these people who are leading people to Jesus in a time like this. I want to honor you because... If there are frontliners in a, in a medical field, we are the real frontliners. People like Jeremiah who are not quitting and preaching the gospel because the most important thing for people is to be saved. And that salvation can only be found in Jesus. I thank the Lord that Jeremiah did not quit. He did not say, I I'm done. He kept on speaking the word in spite that nobody's listening to him. And even though nobody believed him and everybody just saying no to him, he did not quit. It did not affect his commitment to the Lord because you don't have to say no to God when the world says no to you. Even though the world will say no to you, you got to keep on saying yes to him. And that is going upstream. And I want you to take note of the word that has been spoken by him, of the promise that we have claimed, that we have memorized his word. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. The plans to prosper and not to harm you. A plan of hope and a future. Most of the time when we read this verse, we are all thinking that it's all about ourselves. That this is all about my hope. That this is all about my future. But we didn't get the real meaning of it. You, I hope you understand now that when God prospers you, it also means that you are giving hope to somebody. That you are giving the future for somebody. The future of your children. The future of the next generation. This is not just about your hope. When you have hope, then that means that you're going to pass that hope to someone. So that somebody can have hope. 
somebody can have future but they will not have a good future if you quit they will not have a good hope if you stop serving the Lord they will not have those prosperity that you have been praying for if you turn your back. This is the leading of the Lord that we cannot go upstream. This is the flow of the Spirit for us in a times like this. We are going upstream. We are not going backward. We are going forward. We are not getting discouraged. We are picking back our courage. We are not turning away from the Lord. We are getting closer to the Lord. We are not being silent from speaking faith. We are prophesying the promise of the Lord. We are going to break situation through our prophecies. We're going to prophesy. We're going to counter the situation that we are in right now by prophesying, by telling the promise of the Lord. We are going upstream. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you that you have watched this live stream. But my encouragement for you this is this. Don't just go live stream. Go upstream, which means be connected to the Lord. Don't just watch in your life from Monday to Saturday in your daily life. You're going to go upstream. You're going to keep on believing on the Lord. You're going to keep declaring the promises of the Lord in your house and in your family. And I thank the Lord that Jeremiah did not quit. And you know what? Even though he's just one person, God used him to change the nation. Isa pa lang yun. How much more kung ikaw at ako at marami tayo na magkakaisa na magpray and we go upstream, we go prophesying, we keep on believing. I hope and believe that we can change our nation, we can change our families, we can change our community. Only if God is looking for those people who will not flow with the flow of the world, but will flow with the word. And today, this is a word for you. And I'm just praying in the power of the Holy Spirit that today is your day that you're going to say, Yes, Jesus, this is the time that I'm going to go back to you, that I'm going to go forward and no longer going backward, that I will forsake my sin, that I will forsake my my, my, my mistakes and, and shortcomings, and I'm going to go before you and going to follow you. And that's what it means of going upstream. And today, I'm not just preaching a word. What I'm saying is more than just a preaching. This is a prophetic declaration for your family and for you that we, in these times like this, we will not flow where the world is going. We're going to follow what God is leading us. And God's leading for us is to go upstream. Jesus
Now, if this is your first time to hear this message, this kind of message, and you don't know how to be saved, I said a while ago that the most important thing in this world is to be sure of heaven. It's more than just being healed. It's more than just being safe from any uh, virus or any uh, disease or being spared from death. Because the truth of the matter is, whether we like it or not, time will come that we will face a death. And, and But the good thing is that we don't have to face it without security. God has offered security. More than just a sure vaccine, more than just a safe vaccine, God has offered us a sure way of salvation. How? I know. Uh, how? It is by believing and accepting Jesus Christ in your heart. Paaring sabihin mo, Pastor John, naniniwala naman ako kay Kristo. Kilala ko naman siya. Hindi po, uh, iba po yung pagkakilala, iba po yung pagtanggap. Ang pagtanggap po ay tinatanggap mo na si Kristo ang tangi mong tagapigligtas. Na hindi ang tiwala mo sa religion mo, sa gawain mo, sa gawa mo, sa kahit ano, ang tiwala mo lang sa kaligtasan mo ay wala nang iba kundi si Kristo. Dahil si Kristo lang ang namatay sa krus. Siya lang ang tanging pwedeng magligtas sa iyo. Iba po yung kinalakihan, iba yung kilala sa si Jesus, iba po yung tinanggap. Na yung pagtanggap mo ay naunawaan mo, kaya mo siya tinanggap para maligtas ang kaluluwa mo. At ako'y naniniwala itong araw na to, this is the day that you're gonna be saved. Hindi nagkataon na nakikinig ka pa rin hanggang sa ngayon. At kung nais mo na makatiyak ng kaligtasan, I will guide you in prayer of accepting Jesus. So here's a prayer. I hope you follow me. Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. And I'm thankful today that I have discovered the way of salvation. That the way of salvation is not by religion. It is not by works, not by my goodness, but only what you have done on the cross. Lord Jesus, today is the day of salvation. I accept you in my heart. I repent of my sins and I follow you, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for accepting me. Today, I'm going to walk in the new life that you have given me in a new relationship. Thank you, Lord, for this salvation. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you receive Jesus and if you follow that prayer, we are here as a church to guide you and to help you to walk in this newness of life. And we are available after this service. There will be a, a team that will be waiting for you. You can join us in Messenger, in uh, Zoom. And we want to talk to you, we want to chat with you, we want to pray for you, we want to guide you in the new life that you received right today. But for all of us, the message is clear for us in these times. Uh, our, our, the leading of us, uh, the leading of the Lord for us is to go upstream. Come on, as a church, as you as a person, don't go backward. Don't go backward. Go forward. Okay, so thank you, Pastor John, for that amazing message. I am loving our series Upstream because I believe it is so timely for everyone right now. And before we close the service, we want to pray for you. So we invite you to close your eyes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We just thank you for everything that you have done and everything you are doing, despite whatever is happening. You remind us every Sunday that you are in control, that you love us, and you are for us. We thank you, Jesus, and we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, don't forget to take your kids to Kids Online at 3 p.m. Yep, so before we end, we're going to end with some celebration. So we invite you guys to stand up again and let's get ready to praise. If it's your first time tuning in at our online Sunday service, then you are our VIP. And we have a treat for you. Join us at our online ePlace to know more about this special package made just for our first time attendees. We would love to know more about you, and that's why we made a virtual space where we can hang out right after our online Sunday service. This will just take a few minutes, so see you there! What an amazing Sunday service, church! So how about as we end, let's give God 100% and praising Him. Come on!